Welcome back to the big broadcast. It is the Jiggy Jig Way Show. This segment of the big broadcast brought to you by our good friends at Go Sim. That's right, Go Sim. G O S I M dot com slash question mark. J I G G Y J E G U A R. Don't know why that URL is that way. With offices in the U.S. and the U.K., GoSim is the leading global provider of prepaid SIM cards and services that enable leisure and business travelers to use their cell phones while traveling abroad at prices they can afford. And uh, GoSim is amazing. Top five reasons why GoSim customers. Let's talk about this. Top five reasons. Five, as King Kong Bundy used to say. Existing customers of GoSim has put together a list of top five reasons why people use their international SIM card abroad. One, retrieving, retrieving lost luggage. Two, missing flights. Three, making arrangements after an accident or illness. Four, problems with hotel reservations. And five, being notified of news from back home. Amazing, amazing stuff. Why go SIM instead of a, a, a local SIM card? Think about this. Local SIM cards, ones that are designed to work in specific single countries, can often be a good solution for cheap calls, but there are several downsides. Personally, obtaining a local SIM card, if you're a non-resident, has become increasingly difficult. So you want to make sure you check out GoSim.com, G-O-S-I-M.com, slash question mark, Jiggy Jaguar. Do that today. Uh, aviation expert, we're still talking about this Malaysian flight. Aviation expert, what could have happened to Malaysia Airlines flight MH370? The disappearance of Malaysian Airlines flight MH370 with 239 people on board is unusual in that two days after the plane lost communication. There is no reliable evidence of debris, writes Jason Middleton, head of the School of Aviation at the University of New South Wales. No radio calls are received from the flight crew indicating that the plane had any sort of problem before it disappeared somewhere over the Gulf of Thailand, 2.40 a.m. local time, 5.40 a.m. ADT. On Saturday, the plane might have suffered catastrophic and immediate destruction or at least lost all its electronics and communications. If this was the case, it might have descended rapidly to the sea surface in the general area of its last reported flight location. But some systems remained operating as to follow and to allow the pilots to go to slide down, to glide down the area, would uh, the plane would have crashed would be much wider. Probable causes. Pilot error. Very unlikely in, in crews unless some serious malfunctions occur, although the, that was what happened to Air France Flight AF-447. Technical failures. Probably more likely one or two. Illegal interference. Probably more likely than one or two. Uh, weather environment is the number one link on this list. Very unlikely as the weather seemed benign. Space junk or asteroid strike, also very remote possibilities. Oh my God, an asteroid hit it. I'm Alex Jones. Well, asteroid hit it. I'm conspiracy crass or rat bastard. Ah, the conspiracy guys. In the case of the 2009 loss of Air France 447 into the Atlantic Ocean, pilots received an errorous airspeed data due to icing of the instrumentation while the plane on Airbus A330-200 was flying straight and level. The pilots responded poorly and their plane stalled and fell to the sea from nearly 38,000 feet. Poor training was held to be a contributing factor and the captain was apparently not in the cockpit at the time. How much do you tip the captain? That's the question that we have here. You tip the waitress, but how much do you tip the captain? Even with both engine generators unserviceable, the B777 has backup emergency power systems, certainly capable of allowing pilots to transmit a radio call. And the cockpit voice recorder is waterproof, and having a locator pinger will have recorded the last minutes of the conversation between the pilots and also will be re recovered together with detailed forensic studies of all retrieved components. But uh, this is just one man's opinion, written by Jason Middleton, head school of aviation at University of New South Wales. The source is, of course, Ineffable Islands, IneffableIsland.com, I think, something of that nature. 34 minutes after the hour, thanks for joining us. We have got uh, some amazing news coming up. 
Dr. Jack Caravelli will join us in the next segment, and we'll talk about this as well as some of the other things going on. Uh, JiggyJaguar.com is a place to go. I would encourage you to Twitter, at J-I-G-G-Y, J-E-G-U-A-R. Also, dun, 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 you can check us out over there on Facebook. Facebook.com slash the Jiggy Jaguar. Now, we're, we're getting all sorts of different things here. We're putting all sorts of different things together with this, uh, with this aviation expert here uh, to, to go back into this. The so-called, um, it, is, uh, it is capable of withstanding the black box here, capable of withstanding far greater depths than 100 meters and all of withstanding fires and even a mild explosion, it has an internal battery power, which will emit pings to enable location underwater. The cockpit voice recorder, the CVR, also waterproof and having a locator pinger, uh, as we mentioned, will have recorded the last minutes of the conversation between the pilots and will also, uh, also will be recovered. Uh, international law enforcement on the case, it's more than likely that any illegal activities will be ultimately uncovered. The metadata bases of telephone contacts that we consider to be a major intrusion on our privacy may in fact prove to be highly valuable here. And while the Malaysian accident investigators will lead the investigation, many stockholders will contribute by providing specialists, including Malaysia Airlines, Boeing Airplane Company, Rolls-Royce and Honeywell, ultimately the truth will emerge, and hopefully the causes of the tragedy will provide important lessons to make flying even safer in the future. Once again, another reason why I don't get on planes. <laughs> Once again, folks like Jim Cornette from the world of professional wrestling don't get on planes. Um, this is another reason. Explosives in the cargo cockpit or checked baggage also cannot be ruled out as a time of Writing, no group appears to have claimed responsibility recovering the lost plane. We talked about that yesterday with Donald Mazzella and Dan Perkins in our roundtable segment on the Tuesday edition of the big broadcast. Those guys basically, they, they basically said, here's the deal. Nobody's, nobody's claiming responsibility because guess the hell what? If they claimed responsibility... Maybe they've got a cool little tool that they're using. Because, of course, whenever something happens and it can't be explained, everybody immediately goes... Terrorism. So. Aeroplane and base ACARS systems are not usually in constant communication as this increases the cost of uh, satellite communication substantially, so we are left with the probability that all major electronic systems were disabled to the extent that no communications were possible and the aeroplane could not continue to fly. So that's that's another piece of business there. Um, electronics component compartment because of electronics failures but this might uh, occur it's not obvious that it's terrorists, because, of course, terrorism. that's right. Even with both engine generators unserviceable, the B777 has backup emergency power systems certainly capable of allowing pilots to transmit a radio call. This is essentially a strange, strange situation, and who knows if this will ever be solved. I highly doubt it. But uh, double engine failure or in-flight structural failure would likely still leave the pilot's time to issue a, a, uh, a mayday call. Malaysia Airline Flight MH370, it appears that the individual plane, a Boeing 777-200ER, did suffer wingtip damage in a ground collision in 2012. Although failure of this repair would appear to be unlikely cause of communications failure as well. It's a, it's a strange story. It's a very, very strange story. And at some point, we will get an answer to what happened. But uh, neither me, nor Alex Jones, nor Rush Limbaugh, nor Michael Savage, nor Beck. Well, Beck's on vacation. Uh, none of these guys, including Conspiracy Chris and Rat Bastard, 
are going to be able to provide any type of uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna cause this issue and we're not going to uh, uh, be the reason that this is discovered debating it on the air but nonetheless I will do that in our next segment with Dr. Chet Caravelli <laughs> so that is that taking a break coming back here on the world famous Jackie Jaguar show <laughs> 